Oh, hello. You know, for nearly a quarter of a century now, draft booster packs have been the foundation of Magic the Gathering. Drafting itself is largely considered to be one of the best, if not the definitive way to experience this great game. But while draft itself is hopefully never going to go away, draft booster packs themselves are, with Magic the Gathering's newest set, Ravnica Remastered, being the final set to be made with draft booster packs. I hope very much everyone will have at least one opportunity to draft Ravnica Remastered, a special set that is taking cards from over half a dozen Ravnica sets and curated them into a single draft experience. However, drafting a reprint set like Ravnica Remastered is a bit of a different experience from drafting a brand new standard set. The differences can be intimidating, especially if you haven't drafted the older sets that some of the cards are from, but fear not, this video is your friend. In this draft guide, we'll lay out how to draft Ravnica Remastered, including an overview of what your packs will look like, the nature of Ravnica Remastered limited gameplay, what decks in each of the 10 guilds will tend to look like, what low rarity cards you should keep an eye out for when drafting these guilds, and even a couple of the hidden archetypes that are available to be drafted. The goal of this video is to provide you with the information and the confidence you need to hold your own at your local game store's Ravnica Remastered Draft Night. This video is intended for Magic the Gathering players who already know the basics of how to draft, but want to become prepared for the specifics of drafting Ravnica Remastered. If you are brand new to draft, please be sure to check out my new player's guide to draft, which will teach someone who has no idea what a Magic the Gathering draft is, everything that they need to know. This video will assume that you do indeed know how to draft and instead focus on how to have a successful Ravnica Remastered draft. What archetypes and mechanics are present and which cards best suit them? What strategies should you employ when playing them? This guide will cover everything you need to know to draft Ravnica Remastered in a clear, concise video. As ever, although you can draft Ravnica Remastered on Magic Online, if it is possible and reasonable to do so, please consider participating in a draft at your local game store or organizing one with your friends. Draft is indeed one of the best ways to experience Magic the Gathering, and one of the best ways to experience draft is by playing with others in person. And if you do so at your local game store, you'll also have the benefit of supporting this great community when you do. Let's begin by looking at what you should expect to find in a Ravnica Remastered Draft Booster Pack. The Ravnica Remastered card pool consists of 292 cards, 111 commons, 90 uncommons, 71 rares, and 21 mythics. This is slightly more rares than a standard set has, but not by much. The rarity breakdown is overall roughly equivalent to a standard set. As usual, there are 15 magic cards per booster. The first slot in the booster pack contains contains between 8 and 10 commons. In 33% of booster packs, one of your commons will instead be a traditional foil card of any rarity. The second slot in the pack will consist of three or four uncommon cards. The third slot is what is being referred to in this set as the mana fixing slot. This is in lieu of a basic land slot, and it's where you'll find a signet, a guild gate, or even more exciting fixing like a shock land or chromatic lantern. This mana slot is a highly significant wrinkle to Ravnica Remastered Limited. Because mana fixing is so plentiful, you don't need to spend early picks on it. A minimum of 24 total copies of mana fixing will be opened in your draft, which is enough for each player to wind up with three copies on average. 58% of the time, the mana slot will contain a guild gate. 33% of the time, the mana slot will contain a signet. 9% of the time, the mana slot will contain one of the 10 shock lands or a chromatic lantern. The fourth slot consists of a retro frame card of any rarity. Keep an eye on this slot, as you may find a bonus rare card. Only 114 of the 292 cards in Ravnica Remastered Draft are available in Retro Frame, so this slot is guaranteed to have one of these 114 cards. The full set preview on Scryfall has a list of all the Retro Frame cards you can find in your draft booster packs. Finally, the fifth slot in the pack will contain a rare or mythic card, and the sixth slot will contain a token. 
Before we get into the specifics of drafting each individual guild, I first want to discuss how gameplay will look in Ravnica Remastered Limited, generally speaking. There are two important keys to keep in mind about the card pool of this set. One, every guild has two mana guild mages, which tend to be strong and limited due to their efficiency and the mana sink they provide. Two, every guild has a signet. More on signets and other mana fixing at the end of the video, but for now, all you need to know is that signets mean mana ramp is available in every color pair, even non-green color pairs. This tends to be very good for control and mid-range decks, both because aggro decks don't get much out of signets and because these slower decks really want to get ahead of their opponents on mana. As a result, this set's designers intentionally slanted the card pool to benefit aggressive strategies. If control decks get signets to ramp and all decks get guild mages to grind, aggro decks must have some fantastic tools in order to keep up. The result of this is that your deck should either plan on attacking or be good at surviving when your opponent attacks you. If you aren't an aggro deck, you'll want as much cheap removal as you can get your hands on. This removal will come in handy even against other control decks because you want to be able to remove your opponent's guild mage. With that in mind, let's look at each of the guilds you can draft in Ravnica Remastered and some of the lower rarity cards that you should keep an eye out for as they are passed around the pod. Ravnica Remastered is a guild set, so each color pair is very clearly defined. Each guild has a guild mage, and every guild mage is going to be a good card in your deck if you wind up in that guild. A safe beginner strategy is to draft a guild mage from your opening pack and then force that guild's archetype, though I would only recommend doing this if you don't open a good rare. Many Ravnikans ask the question, is the Is It deck a classic Is It deck? And the answer is, yes, Is It is a classic Is It deck. All of which means if you draft red blue, you get to sling spells and have fun. Many of Is It's greatest spell payoffs are available to you. There's not a ton of card draw available at common and uncommon, so you'll need to make the most of your compulsive researches and radical ideas. Crackling Drake, Terramander, and Murmuring Mystic are your best win conditions, though don't discount Demon Fire ability to cross the finish line. When drafting a Spells Matter archetype, it can be hard to balance the right number of creatures to spells. You want plenty of spells to always trigger your Spells Matter cards, but you can't play too many or you won't have your payoffs consistently enough. Krenko's Command is therefore very important to draft early and often. It gives you creatures while triggering your Spells Matter cards. Among the common and uncommon creatures, is it Guild Mage and Goblin Electromancer are your most impactful two drops, followed by Burning Prime. Profit. At 3 mana, Gutter Stipe is a solid way to build up damage, and Leapfrog is a reasonable filler card. The three win condition creatures I mentioned earlier are also, of course, excellent. Avoid other creatures if you can. Your ideal is it deck will have between 8 and 10 true creatures, 3 to 5 good 2 drops, a Gutter Sniper 2, and as many copies of Murmuring Mystic, Terramander, and Crackling Drake as you can find. The Azurius deck in Ravnica Remastered Limited is an aggressive, up-tempo deck designed to keep your opponents off balance by establishing an early board presence with efficient creatures and following that up with bounce effects, counter spells, and the detain mechanic. When you detain a creature, you prevent it from attacking and blocking until your next turn, and you also prevent it from activating its abilities. The key to this mechanic is to make the most of the time your opponent's creatures spend detained, that is, by attacking. The name of the game for Azurius is two drop creatures as there are a ton of high impact critters at that mana slot, and you can never have too many of them. Every two mana white or blue creature is playable in the Azurius deck except for persistent petitioners. The uncommons are the best of these available, and the best common two drop is Azurius Arrester. You don't want too many four plus mana value creatures, but Azurius Justiciar is a great curve topper. For counter magic, the two mana counters are better than the three mana counter. Remand is at its absolute best in this this deck, as the tempo advantage gained for such a small mana investment will be a nightmare for your opponents to fight through. Quench is also very good in this deck, since your opponent won't have the time to play around it by leaving up an extra two mana. 
The Demir deck is a classic blue-black control archetype. Keep your opponent's board clear of creatures with spot removal and counter magic. Refuel with card draw like Compulsive Research and Demir Guildgate, then finish the game with expensive threats like Murmuring Mystic, Night Veil Predator, and Morai, and Moro, and Mori, and Moara, and Mora, and Moroi. -E -E. Playing a control deck in this aggressive format isn't for the faint of heart, but Demir drafters have adequate tools to slow down their opponent's offensive. Cheap, grindy creatures can clog the board, such as Orzhov Enforcer, two-mana Death Toucher that replaces itself when it dies, Mortis Strider, which can chump block forever and hold anything with one power toughness back on the ground, and Golgari Thug, which does the same, though with the drawback of taking over your draw step. Demir decks are among the decks most interested in the guild's Signet, as getting ahead on mana is the best way to survive an opponent's aggressive start. The Rakdos deck in Return to Ravnica is another aggressive deck, looking to play a short, low-resurgence game where you empty your hand as soon as possible to flood the board with creatures, deal direct damage to your opponents, and power up your hellbent cards as early as possible. Unleash creatures get stronger if you decide you don't care about blocking, which, let's be honest, what Rakdos player wants to block. Spectacle also makes a comeback in Return to Ravnica. Draft a couple cheap evasive creatures like Dread Malkin and Tin Street Dodger for easy access to Spectacle. Blade Juggler is a great way to keep up the pressure while refueling you with a fresh card. Gobhobbler Rats is one of your best Hellbent payoffs, as it becomes a 3-2 that is very hard to destroy if you get down to zero cards in hand. Rakdos Guild Mage helps you get to Hellbent by letting you pitch cards to disfigure your opponent's creatures, and gives you a mana sink once you have no more cards in hand. Rakdos Colors have plentiful removal, but try to prioritize any removal that can also be burned, such as Skewer the Critics and Demon Fire, over removal that only hits creatures like Last Grasp or Ultimate Price. This will mitigate the risk of having dead removal spells rotting in your hand when your opponent has no good targets, so your Hellbent threats can remain as juiced as possible. The Gruul archetype is also a beat-down deck, but with big, splashy creatures rather than smaller, cheap ones. This deck is excited about the plentiful ramp at its disposal, like Utopia Sprawl, Gruul Signet, and Far Seek. It's not even a terrible idea to draft Signets that are only half of your colors in the Gruul deck, as these can still contribute to casting some of your bigger boys ahead of schedule. Ravnica Remastered is full of powerful but expensive mythics that will struggle to make an impact in this aggressive, limited environment, but Gruul's acceleration means means it will be easy to cast your Protean Hulks, Utvara Hellkites, and Borg Berigmos Enraged before you get run over by the little guys. As is always the case when drafting a ramp deck, you'll want to be especially mindful of your curve, or more specifically, your ramp to big spell ratio. Though big creatures are castable for you, you still don't want too many. Fortunately, the design restriction caused by trying to fit all 10 guilds into a single set helps you on this front. There are only a few low rarity creatures with mana value 5 or greater in Gruul colors. Rampaging Rendhorn is a solid top-end common, either giving you 4 haste damage for 5 mana, or a slower but beefier 5-5. Stalking Vengeance is a highly punishing curve topper at uncommon, attacking for 5 haste damage and making combat a nightmare for your opponents. The Celestia deck is, unsurprisingly, a tokens deck. Hey, what a surprise. I'm about to have a heart attack from that surprise. Tokens and Celestia, anyway. Populate and Convoke are the two primary mechanics here, both of which reward you for putting tokens into play. Go wide, go big, go both, with creatures and spells that make little creatures, big creatures, and everything in between. When drafting a Celestia deck, every card you draft should either put a creature into play or reward you for having creatures in play. This deck is therefore not particularly interested in green ramp spells that aren't attached to creatures, like Selesnia Signet or Far Seek. The notable exception to this is Utopia Sprawl, which is so efficient, it's still worth putting in your deck. Selesnia Evangel and Guild Mage are nice repeatable sources of creature token generation. Call of the Conclave is both an awesome creature on rate, and gives you a great token to start populating with. Overwhelm is an awesome payoff card for pumping your army to great heights, but is a bit awkward. Its hefty 7 mana value is mitigated by its Convoke keyword. But when you Convoke with your creatures, you can't attack with them to make use of the pump. Pick up a couple to arms to clearly address the issue by untapping your creatures after they've Convoked out a big spell. Outside of this particular combo, two arms is a card you'll want a couple copies of, both as a combat trick and as a way to cast the potent removal spell Devouring Light, while still getting to attack with your creatures. Or just activate Selesnia Evangel. 
The Orzhov deck is a mid-range deck that slowly strangles your opponents with value and some potent nickel and dime effects. Extort is an all-star here, both as a win con and as a way to prolong the game by gaining life. Similarly, Afterlife was a very powerful mechanic in its original set and remains strong here, giving your creatures twice as much bang for their buck. Haunt is back too, though I can't say I'm a fan of this keyword. If you'd like to know why, check out my worst keywords video to see why, or just try playing with Haunt cards to see why. Though I do not recommend you play with Haunt cards for the most part. Similar to Demir, Orzov is happy to clog the board with many of the same sticky blockers, but also gets to add a few white ones as well. Basilica Guards, a great defensive body equipped with Extort, and Ministrant of Obligation, which leaves behind two 1-1 flyers when it dies. Stab Wound, an excellent card in any black deck, is particularly good here. As the slow chokehold the Orzov deck applies its opponents makes the two life lost from Stab Wound particularly particularly brutal. The best way to use Stab Wound is on a creature with greater than two toughness, so it sticks around and keeps dealing your opponent two damage, but can't get through your big blockers in combat anymore. Ill-Gotten Inheritance is a win con your opponents will despise, though you don't want to play any more than a couple copies. The Golgari deck is a recursive value deck built around using your graveyard with the help of the dredge and scavenge mechanics. This is the archetype I have the most questions about, as I don't know how successful the deck's strategy will prove. Dredge and scavenge are not the most exciting limited mechanics, and the cards available at low rarities with these mechanics aren't even the best in class. Because of this, I would recommend that new drafters steer clear of Golgari decks, as it is going to be a hard deck to build effectively. That said, a more experienced drafter can still build a solid deck in these colors. Golgari Guild Mage is a great card, as is true for all the Guild Mages. Golgari Find Broker is also fantastic, regrowing a permanent on top of its solid 3-4 four for 4 stat line. Loaming Shaman helps prevent you from milling yourself out indefinitely if you pair it with a way to regrow it, such as Golgari Guild Mage. Junk Troller is theoretically available to help prevent you from milling out as well, though a 4-mana 0-6 Defender isn't the most exciting stat line. Perhaps the best best payoff for being in Golgari is Woebringer Demon, downshifted from rare to uncommon. Golgari is great at providing you with unlimited sacrifice fodder on your end, so it won't be hard for the demon to keep your opponent's forces in check while it clocks in the air. And if your opponent ever decides to just stop playing creatures to neuter your demon, you can rebuy the demon later to put your opponent back into the abyss. The Simic deck is exactly what you'd expect out of Simic. Plus one, plus one counter beatdown. Put creatures in play, make them bigger, then get to smashing. Simic is the only guild whose creatures can easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with gruels, though some of them may take a little while to get that tall. This deck also has a bit of a flash sub theme, thanks to the guild's premier uncommon Frilled Mystic. Mystic is an excellent card, but it's made even better when you pair it with other flash creatures or instant speed card draw that you can spend four mana on if if your opponent elects not to pay it. Whisper Agent and Radical Idea, therefore, are Frilled Mystic's two best friends. Alternatively, you can give sorceries you control Flash with either Quicken, or by splashing for Teferi Time Raveler. Or, dare you to dream, you can give all your non-Mystic Green creatures Flash with Yiva, Nature's Herald. Forced Adaptation, Helium Squirter, and Simic Guild Mage help add counters to creatures that don't get them naturally. The Guild Mage can also move your Forced Adaptation around. Kiora's Dam Breaker, is a beefy top-end card that provides a buff to your creatures that already have counters, as well as any planeswalkers you happen to have in play. For removal, Titanic Brawl is the best in the business, as it will almost always cost one mana in your deck. Silhana Ledgewalker is a devastating threat once you start making it larger, as it's both difficult to block and impossible to kill with spot removal. If you put a Ledgewalker into play, enchant it with a forced adaptation, then hold up counter spells the rest of the game, it will be difficult for your opponents to survive. The Boros deck wants to go wide and hit fast with cheap, punishing creatures that scale as the game goes on, thanks to Battalion and Mentor. The guild borrows from the good, cheap white creatures in Azurius decks and the good, cheap red ones from Rakdos, plus a few potent gold cards of its own. In addition to its great creature suite, the Boros deck has several good, flexible burn spells. The best of these is Lightning Helix, but Boros drafters won't complain about any skewer the critics that get past their way. The other key removal spell is Mugging, a good card 
card in any red deck, but particularly strong in Boros for its ability to neutralize a blocker for a turn at the cost of just one red mana. Similarly to Azurius, two drop creatures are always going to be solid picks, though this deck is more interested in curving out with high impact three and four mana cards than Azurius. Boros Elite is the only one drop you should be trying to fit into your deck, but it's quite strong and Boros drafters are likely to be the only players at the table who want it. True Fire Captain will be your strongest top end creature. Don't bother with drafting Signets in this archetype. With so many fantastic common and uncommon threats at two, three, and four mana, the Boros deck is likely to be the strongest deck in Ravnica Remastered Limited on day one. Boros is certainly the deck I recommend new players lean toward drafting. When drafting your deck, there are two other archetypes that aren't tied to a guild that are worth mentioning in this video. The first is the multicolor good stuff deck that capitalizes on the plentiful mana fixing available in the format. This deck tends to have a green base and wants as much ramp and mana fixing as it can get, alongside efficient removal spells to prevent your opponent from running you over. As a payoff for drafting all that mana fixing, you get to play every powerful bomb you can open, regardless of color or mana value. Get in here, Tide Spout Tyrant, Ulvara Hellkite, and Liliana Dreadhorde General. When drafting this deck, keep in mind that there are several guilds in the format, such as Boros and Selesnia, who don't want their signet, which means you can generally pick those up later in the draft. Open the Gates is a premier fixer for this archetype. As a one mana Lay of the Land effect, you can safely count each Open the Gates you draft as a land. Gate Colossus is also a nice payoff for this deck, as you're likely to draft many gates throughout your draft. The second bonus archetype is a bit of a meme, but can certainly be effective if it comes together for you. I'm speaking, of course, of the Persistent Petitioner deck. Petitioner is a common, and no deck in the format will want to play it aside from someone specifically drafting around the card. So if the archetype is open, it is bound to be wide open. Pick up as many of these copies as you can get your hands on, and pair them with either black or red removal. In a pinch, Muddle the Mixture can also act as redundant copies of your petitioners. If you're lucky enough to open Bruvac the Grand Delinquent, Deliquent? Did we settle this? Deliquent, Bruvac, then your petitioners will really pop off. Ravnica Remastered is coming both to local game stores and Magic Online this Friday, January 12th. I hope very much, whether digitally or in person, you get to experience this excellently curated draft set. My own Is It Worth It To Buy video will be releasing at that time, and while I cannot yet say whether financially this set is worth it to buy, I can say that, cost aside, purely from a gameplay perspective, it is absolutely worth it to experience and enjoy a draft of Ravnica Remastered. And if you can do so in person, with friends, or at your local game store, it's all the more worth it. And I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. If you're looking to do something with these cards after you've drafted them, check out our Ravnica Remastered Commander episode of Shuffle Up and Play, where we build decks using cards from Ravnica Remastered and from throughout Magic's history and play them against one another. That video is listed in this video's description or simply by clicking here, I think, or, or here, or here, or there, or somewhere. time on Shuffle Up and Play. What's up, peasants? It's <laughs> Shuffle Up and Play, and we are drafting a peasant cube today. Peasant cube is anything with just commons and uncommons, so no rares and mythic rares here. I'm Corey Ballmeister. And my name is Brad Nelson. I'm Emma Partlow. Trigger off my young pyromancer. And young pyromancer like, can get out of hand, though. Yes. It is out of hand. It's on the battlefield. Hey. <laughs> Are you just going to win right now on this turn? Corey, I've been on the show before. Yeah. You should ask Emma. Emma, <laughs> what should I play now? Yeah. She's got nothing, but I suggest trying to win this turn. <laughs> now, Brad, if you want to attack with that mother runs, I'm just going to give you a brother pass, OK? I'll just take it. I, I told you, your worst plays will be turned into shorts. I'm never going to be able to financially recover from this.